Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Elisabetta, your uh, watercolor friend from Italy. I have a passion for our supplies and today I'm exploring a new palette. It's new for me, but it has been on the market for a very, very long time. It's an old uh, watercolor set by Paul Rubens, but it's still available for sale. Uh, it, is, uh, it is still available because I see that you can still buy it. I have a problem with the flowers because I love uh, watercolor flowers, but I am totally useless. I don't know where to start. And uh, because I'm uh, uh, firmly persuaded that uh, practice uh, is very important in painting, I have decided to buy this palette, which is especially for flowers. It says um, artist transparent watercolor, fine artist watercolors flower color matching it is botanical for flowers so maybe if i have a ready palette for flowers maybe um, i can practice more easily i have an incentive in practicing this one is in tube but it is always um, it is also available in pans in any case i have squeezed my tubes a couple of days ago in pans so that it's uh, readily available Today I will swatch uh, these colors for you and uh, I will also try some flowers. I'm very hesitant because that's really something that I'm very, very bad at. So let's start, let's dive in. Paul Rubens um, has uh, some limitation because it's not easy to find uh, open stock, or maybe absolutely it is not, but uh, it's a very nice brand and um, I have always uh, worked with pleasure with uh, their colors, so let's start, let's start uh, swatching. I think I will uh, directly swatch my colors uh, from the pans that I have squeezed. more practical. I never use um, colors directly fresh from the tubes. I always prefer to squeeze them in pans and then use them. So swatching them uh, from the uh, dried colors from pans is more realistic uh, for my usage. Okay, let's start. Uh, I'm very excited. I think I will use a square brush today. I like to vary. And uh, I'm also re-wetting them. For Rubens, uh, it's not hard to re-wet, but it needs to be revived uh, seconds before that you use them. I, I find that it benefits from it. So the first color is um, nickel azo yellow, a color that I really like. I have changed the order they came from. This was uh, with Ursa. And when it's concentrated, it looks like an Earth. But then usually PY 150, one of my favorite pigments, it uh, dilutes into a wonderful transparent yellow. Great, great yellow, very transparent, great for glazing. Then I have uh, Hansa Yellow PY3. It's a permanent lemon yellow. I don't think it's very light fast. It's quite light fast. There are some colors, I think, in this um, set that are not completely light fast but they're all i think they favor beauty over light fastness which is a choice as i don't think i'm selling my flowers because they have no market no one would buy them for me it's okay given also the very good value for money they have permanent yellow medium this is hansa Yellow Deep, I would say, PY65. What a beautiful primary yellow. I 
Indian yellow, PY83, which is a pigment that I really love and use a lot. I already have this Indian yellow in uh, my basic Paul Rubens watercolor set. I use it a lot. Very beautiful. Uh, very, very beautiful. I think it's diary, diary light yellow. Very beautiful orange yellow. Then we have our first uh, multi pigment. Okay, here I made a mistake. I swatched twice the Indian yellow because the permanent orange yellow is this one. And I'm swatching on top and here too, so you can see the true color. But as it's darker, it's slightly opaque. And we'll cover it and it's a wonderful, wonderful orange. It's made with a PO73 Pyrrol Orange and PY74. Um, Hansa Yellow Medium. I'm diluting it. Doing a, it's a bit of a mess. I messed up, but because I swatched twice the Indian Yellow. And this is wonderful, this one. I find this uh, permanent orange yellow really beautiful. Then we have Chinese Red. They call it Chinese Red. And it's spiral red, actually, PR 20, 254. It's very rich, very pigmented. These colors are beautiful. I was never disappointed by Paul Rubens. For everyday sketching in a sketchbook, uh, I think they're very good. Good uh, value for money. Now rose red, quinacridone violet or quinacridone rose, PB19, very pretty. For flowers, this is very nice. Mm, how beautiful. Gonna use this today in my demo sketch. Then peach light, PR15. 46 is opera. I think it has some fluorescence inside. And it's PR 146, uh, naphtol carmine. Not so light, fast, I would say. Not fugitive, but in any case, if it has fluorescences, fluorescent um, agent, it makes it fugitive. Magenta PR 122. In acrylo magenta, which is my, which is a color that I really like and it's very useful for flowers, both for mixing and on its own, I find. Then a classic, dioxin violet, they call it permanent violet. It's a color that for me is a staple in a palette for darkening other colors or even on its own for um pansies beautiful colors right this is beautiful then acid test lavender violet beautiful pb29 ultramarine blue pv3 which is uh, missile violet fugitive color and pw6 I have to tell you what I think about this usage of fugitive colors. Mm, doesn't move much on paper. Maybe I need to change water. It was dirty. Let me change the water. It is so pigmented that my water is already dirty, very dirty. And I have two pots. This violet is really beautiful. Violet is a color, it's really an acquired taste. I hated it when I started painting and now I love it for skies, it's beautiful. Now French ultramarine, they write France ultramarine, but I think they mean French ultramarine, although Real French ultramarine should be more granulating than this. 
I already have it from another set, Ruben set. It's not as granulating as it could be, but it's a beautiful color, a warm ultramarine blue. One more very useful colors for flowers, cobalt blue. This is beautiful. Oh, it's almost a periwinkle. It's very beautiful. And it is PB28, of course. Mm, these colors don't move much on paper. What do you think? Do they? They don't. Yeah, it's a bit of a limit, but cobalt colors don't move so much, don't have this great dispersion compared to quinacridone, for instance. Thalo blue. One more color that I really love. It's a primary blue, transparent. I love this color. Ah, look at this. This uh, has great dispersion. This is uh, PB15 column three. It's green shade. It's the most common type of thalo blue. Beautiful color, very useful for um, flowers, but also for sky, sea. Indigo. This is the first time I try an indigo by Paul Rubens. So I'm quite curious. And it is uh, made with uh, PB19, Pinacinone Violet, PB15, Sailor Blue, and uh, PBK6, Lamp Black. It's beautiful indigo. Wow, I need to compare my indigos, but this is really beautiful, really beautiful. Then, one more colors that I really like, and it is turquoise light, teal, PB36, you know that you can make it from different pigments, and this is made with um, cobalt, uh, it's also, you can use um, PB36 for cerulean, but, um, here you can, it's used for turquoise and it's beautiful teal color. I love it. Quite opaque, granulating. Um, PG36, Thalo yellow shade, Thalo green yellow shade. Look at this, it's a jewel. It's wonderful, so transparent. Thalo colors, wow, I love them. I need to dip. Um, I need to make a, some videos about Thalo colors, I think. Emerald green light, Thalo green yellow shade, beautiful, beautiful color. Then I have um, permanent green, quite opaque. And it is a sort of May green made with uh, PG36. Uh, PY3 Hansa Yellow and PY64. PY3 is Hansa Yellow Light, whereas PY74 is Hansa Yellow Medium. This is color that I already have that leaves me quite uh, puzzled. That bubbles me because it's PG17 Chromium Oxide Green, but usually it's very opaque and dull. And this version is more like a sap green. In any case, I can tell you it's a green that I adore and use it very much. So maybe it's the wrong pigment, but it's beautiful green. Beautiful green for foliage. Look at this. Really beautiful. Then a color that the first time I try from uh, Paul Rubens, but it's a color that I like to buy from other brands. And it's a beautiful beautiful olive green this palette is wonderful it's pg17 chromium oxide green py83 py83 is uh, indian yellow and pr101 red iron oxide so it's very muted it's mossy beautiful uh, yellow sienna deep it's like a darker rose sienna it's a rosiana basically. I like rosiana. There is no yellow ochre in this set, but um, among uh, nickel also yellow and uh, this yellow sienna deep rosiana, I think you can work. 
Now with Earth, they always mess up name at Paul Rubens. And I'm usually not enthusiast about the Earth, but this Van Dyke Brown, it's not a Van Dyke Brown, I think but it's very beautiful. It's more like a burnt amber. Oh, it's a warmer brown, so beautiful. PBR7. We have three PBR7 in a row. The other one is called Cyprus Brown Deep. It's more a raw amber, you see. A cooler. It's absolutely very low tinting. Cypress brown deep. The darker I can get is this one. And then burn brown. I know this already. It's very dark. It's almost a sepia, but still a PBR7. But it's cooler. It's not a burnt. I don't think it's a burnt amber, this one. Because it's cooler. Okay. We let them dry. In the meantime, I will be so brave that I will dare some flowers. Wow. Very simple because I'm really useless at flowers. <laughs> okay, we let these dry.
You know, I was brave enough to paint hydrangeas, which I love because I have hydrangeas in my gardens and they're just blooming now. And um, where they in bloom, I, I show you my hydrangeas. I just love them. So today I can start uh, by showing you my dogs that, you know, I adore my dogs and here they are in my garden. Since I was a little girl, I had them in a country house that uh, my parents had, so I spent my childhood weekends and uh, part of summer in that um, country house with the hydrangeas. They were blue, those hydrangeas. And here in my house now, many years later, I have hydrangeas too, and they bring back wonderful memories. Okay, so let's stop here, otherwise I become sad. And let's go back to our swatches. Now they're completely dry and uh, I'm happy of this uh, watercolor palette. I know it's not the latest release from Paul Rubens. I know it's nothing new, but um, just what I needed to practice more my flowers because having them in a palette like this just is uh, so easy to practice. Um, let's go. First of all, let's see how many single pigments there are. I like just to make sure, not that I don't like convenience green or thing, but it's nice to see that um, they have tried to limit as much as possible the multi-pigment uh, colors and they have like one, five, just five out of 24 are multi-pigment and those uh, five, I think they're very cute. I don't have a yellow ochre, I don't have a burnt sienna, but I have other colors that are very nice that usually you don't get in a ready-made set, like uh, turquoise light or lavender or these pinks, pinks you don't easily get. This rose red is really nice. Um, colors, not all of them move uh, very well on paper. Some do, some don't. Earth, that usually the weak point of Paul Rubens are not at all bad in this collection. No that uh, this yellow sienna deep is great for mixing and so is the nickel as a yellow this orange is wonderful maybe too many yellows uh, too many yellows and uh, i would have used a manganese blue or a cerulean maybe but uh, i think it's okay i think that i'm gonna have a lot of fun colors are very vibrant very easy to use and um, you have uh, like four yellows, one orange, one red. Maybe I could have had an alizarin crimson, why not? And I have a magenta, rose red and peach light. This peach light, I'm not crazy about opera rose. Now talking about the light fastness, not all of them are light fast. Like this peach light is not light fast. This uh, PY3 is not the most uh, light fast yellow. But for um, a news like mine that is just practicing on a sketchbook, I think that the, this is very nice because colors are beautiful. They are artist grade. Uh, if I consider the saturation and the quantity of pigment, they are very pigmented. They are also very, very beautiful. The greens, this permanent green is not the best, but in florals can be useful because, uh, for instance, if you have a Meadows of flowers, this is so useful and you can just mute it down. This uh, sailor green is useful for mixing. The turquoise light is wonderful. Just very nice collection. I have, I am really excited. I can't wait to use it more. And um, that's it for the swatches. 
let's go back to the demonstration sketch which proved my courage to do this in as a first time I use a palette flowers is really courageous of me just let me see if it is dry okay now it's dry and maybe the splatters are not completely dry but i like the light that i have in this moment so i go on and uh, it's very simple sketch flowers very basic i really have to practice but that's the purpose of this set to help me practice with the um, flowers because you know that practice is really key and um, I love the earth for the pottery because uh, I think that uh, I, the flowers is nicer than the flowers themselves, but the colors are just lovely. I really love the flowers, especially the blues, maybe more than the pinks, but uh, the greens were great to use. And uh, I found it easy to challenge myself with this uh, flower. I might darken slightly the center of some flowers. for having watched this exercise with me and these swatches do you have a do you paint flowers yourself what colors do you use um, is that one of your favorite subject any recommendation of any color that i might integrate in this palette you see i have space because i might always replace um full pan with two half pans once you finish so I'm ready to hear what color do you think is missing from this flower watercolor set and um, do you know this uh, set yourself just if you have a dedicated set alternative to this I'd like to hear about it and uh, that's it thanks a lot for having watched this uh, set with me I'll put uh, the link of all the um, materials used brushes paper paper I have used my fantastic uh, cotton baron paper which i find fantastic and uh, thanks oh mm.